What is nature's best technology for locking away carbon? Which are centers of biodiversity? In recent weeks and months, I've been coming across a name which invariably causes me to investigate a subject I never really give a lot of thought to, the environment in which I photograph my wildlife subjects. The reason for this is not a lack of interest in or care for where I am, but because I, or any other wildlife photographer for that matter, when I'm in a particular environment, I know from experience what I'm likely to find there. So there's no real need to give it a second thought. Why am I now thinking more about my environment and this name that I've been coming across more and more? The answer is climate change and what we can do to help. The name is Miyawaki. Professor Akira Miyawaki is a Japanese botanist. He's an expert in plant ecology who specializes in natural forests. And this is what first caught my attention and led me to find out more about the man and his methods, because his methods truly are unique and without doubt natural. Trees are essential for life on earth, providing us with oxygen and storing carbon, and all the while stabilizing the soil. Trees become forests, forests become complex ecosystems, great wildlife habitats which are home to many species of plant and animal life, providing them with food and a safe place to live and to raise a family. Once upon a time, 80% of Ireland was covered in trees, great forests stretching all across the island of Ireland. Today, this coverage is less than 11%, whereas somewhere in the region of 40% of the European Union is covered in trees. A sad fact we need to rectify if we're to succeed in our fight against global warming. Professor Miyawaki has been promoting his natural forest ideas since the 1970s, and projects based on his method are currently well established in Japan, India, the Netherlands, France, Britain, and even in a small way here in Ireland and I'll come back to the Irish involvement a little later. Well then, what's so special about the Miyawaki method of reforestation? Firstly, it derives its philosophy from an old proverb, generally attributed to the Greeks, which says, a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. I suppose you could say that this is paying it forward, helping to shape the future of and for our grandchildren and the planet they'll inhabit. Hopefully it will be a better place to live in in the future. Following on from the idea of planting a single tree, and here I quote from the literature and videos I've seen about the Miyawaki method. How much greater is a society that plants whole forests? Hmm, now there's an idea. But, you say, it takes years, many years, to grow a forest. Maybe. But the Miyawaki method takes just three years to get to a stage where it can be left, more or less, to its own devices, with just a little help from the community. And at this point, I stress community because the Miyawaki method is basically a community oriented program but acquiring the land needed on which to plant the trees and the funding needed to buy not only the trees themselves, but also the other materials and tools needed in the early stages of planting and development requires corporate sponsorship. Therefore, to achieve success using the Miyawaki method requires all three elements to work together in an attempt to aid the reforestation of the planet and to also help save us from ourselves as we continue to ravish the planet for our own selfish reasons. 
Although I have said that real success requires all of these elements, I must also point out that there have been several cases where individual groups and corporations have provided the land, money and labour to proceed alone. But if the project is to succeed on a worldwide basis, then all three elements must gather together to make, make it succeed. Reforestation using the Miyawaki method has been proven to create native forests in many countries in a relatively short period of time. I have already mentioned some of these countries, but this method is potentially one that could be adopted in every country in the world. If this were to happen, we would be well on the way to solving the climate crisis that we have created. We have the wherewithal to restore a balance between ourselves and the natural world, which as a species we are part of, but because of the way we have abused the planet and its other inhabitants, we've lost sight of this fact. In his new documentary, which he calls his witness statement, David Attenborough says that it's not too late to save the planet, but we, the human race, must act. We must rewild the planet. And it's with that thought in mind that I believe the Miyawaki method could easily be adopted by community groups, clubs and schools as a local initiative which would not require a large outlay of time and effort and would be a great educational tool for children who have become detached from the natural world while helping in the overall scheme of things to assist in the rewilding of the planet. There are several quotes from the Attenborough documentary which stick in my mind and which I think we should all consider strongly when deciding what sort of world we intend to leave for our children and grandchildren and for the generations who may follow them if the human race has not become extinct by then, which is a strong possibility if we continue to misuse the planet and its inhabitants as we do currently. Human beings have overrun the world, he says. If we act now, we can put it right. He then goes on to say, we need to learn how to work with nature rather than against it. After all, nature is our biggest ally and our greatest inspiration. And it's with that thought in mind that I come back to Professor Akira Miyawaki and his method of reforestation, which is a proven way of creating native forests in extremely short periods of time. Think of the benefits children who have helped in the creation of such a forest would get when they could actually see the forest grow as they themselves grow. So what are the possibilities of adopting the Miyawaki method here in Ireland? Well, there are currently several schools in Limerick using an initiative of LEAF Ireland called an Chilvjog, or Tiny Forest. Although it is loosely based on the Miyawaki method, there are minor differences. But from an ecological and educational point of view, the results should be exactly the same. Could we do the same here in Tala and the wider Dublin area? I believe we can. And what convinces me even more is an announcement in recent days by South Dublin County Council of their intention to develop three Miyawaki forests in Sean Walsh Park, my local park. This new initiative by SDCC was the result of much research into Professor Miyawaki's methods and their adoption in other countries by my good friend John Kybert, who is the driving force behind a local voluntary group called Litter Mugs. This then led on to a lot of lobbying on John's part of various local voluntary groups, individuals and businesses, and of course, South Dublin County Council. When John approached Tala Community Council to come on board to strengthen his appeal to SDCC, they immediately agreed to back his proposal to the council, who were to be commended for 
taking the idea on board and running with it. While SDCC will supply the land, tools and material for these three mini forests here in Tala, litter mugs and several other voluntary groups who do Trojan work in keeping our local rivers and parks free of litter have agreed to supply the labour required for the first three years, at which point the forests will become self-sustaining. I look forward to seeing these first three forests develop over the next few years and hopefully other councils throughout the county and country will follow SDCC's lead. Before I wrap up this week's episode of Wildlife Wednesday, I'd like to quote David Attenborough once more when he said, Forests are a fundamental component of our planet's recovery. They are the best technology nature has for locking away carbon, and they are centres of biodiversity. Again, the two features work together. The wilder and more diverse forests are, the more effective they are at absorbing carbon from the atmosphere. We must immediately halt deforestation everywhere. With that quote in mind, the Miyawaki method of reforestation is one way for us to begin to reverse the effects of deforestation and climate change. And then, and then, think of the biodiversity which wasn't there before these forests came into being. Depending on the size and location of these forests, who knows what species might be present. So for today's slideshow, I'll leave you with the selection of some of the species currently found in and around the location of the first tree forests South Dublin County Council planned to develop. I hope you enjoy it. Well, thanks again for watching Wildlife Wednesday, folks. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and if you did, I'd be grateful if you'd give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And when you do, don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. Till next week, stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands and wear a mask where necessary, while continuing to maintain social distancing. 
We're not out of the woods yet. Take care, folks. Bye.